Welcome back to Burn Peak. I'm Seth, and today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different, but kind of the same. I have here a whole bunch of bike tools, and I have them separated into three categories right here. Here to our right are tools that I'm not even really sure if they're bike tools. You probably have these in your shop. I mean, a bike Phillips head screwdriver probably doesn't need to be a bike Phillips head screwdriver. Now over here to our left, we have tools that are clearly bike tools. Here's a tire lever and a spoke wrench and a cassette removal tool. You would be hard pressed to do your job without these tools. Now in the center here, we have tools that are sort of in between. Could we find a suitable replacement for a cable housing cutter? How about a pedal wrench? And yeah, a valve core wrench seems like a bike tool, but I think we could find a replacement for that. So today we're gonna go to the store, we're gonna see what type of replacements we can find, and we're gonna find out what type of bike tools you really need and what tools you already have in your shop you can sort of repurpose for working on bikes. These are cable cutter pliers, maybe we can do housing with these. I suppose we can make a cup press out of this. Okay, so we went to some stores and found a few tools and I also have some non-bike tools that we can test out, but the first thing I wanna look at are these two needle nose pliers. At first glance, they kinda look exactly the same and actually they cost about the same. These are good needle nose pliers. They're made by Channel Lock probably last a really long time, but immediately I can see some key differences between them. Now, aside from them just being kind of a different size and shape, these ones from Park Tool actually have crimpers in them for crimping the little cable ends onto bicycle cables. Now, could you do that with these by just squeezing them? Sure, but it's not gonna do as good of a job. So a good set of needle nose pliers will have sharp cutters and you should be able to cut braided cable. Yeah, these actually do a really good job of that. If you have a set of needle nose pliers already, you probably don't have to get bike specific ones. Now, I do like how these are spring loaded. It does have the crimpers in them and it does have a couple of little spaces in the plier for holding hoses and cables and things like that. They're just optimized for the bike. And because they cost the same, if you're setting up a real bike shop in your garage, you should get these, but you really don't need them. Now, where things get a little trickier is when you're dealing with cable housing. So I got these cable cutters from the hardware store. This is just the store brand. It actually has two little inserts for different size cable. I'm gonna see how it works on some cable housing. Now cable cutters are a little bit different because they work sort of like a parrot's beak. So it shears the cable and leaves a little bit of a cleaner cut. I would say that it was easier to cut with the bike specific ones. There was a little bit more leverage, but the quality of the cut is about the same. These ones are spring loaded. It seems like all the bike ones are spring loaded, which is kind of nice when you're doing things quick in the shop. Another thing I noticed is just from making that one cut, there's actually damage to the cutter. Like these don't even want to open anymore. Like I have to kind of like force them open because they've been damaged so much from cutting housing. <laughs> On brake housing specifically, you have a solid core here, and so if you don't get cutters that are sufficiently hardened, you're gonna end up damaging them on cut number one, and that's not very economical no matter how cheap they were. So the next thing I wanna talk about are wrenches. So these here are bike-specific wrenches. Why can't we just use a normal adjustable wrench or just open-ended wrench for these things? And the answer is you probably could. Let's try it. So most pedals these days you can use a hex wrench for, but there are pedals that you need a pedal wrench for. See, it's just got an open end right there. Place it on the axis of the pedal. Now, can we use a normal wrench on that? Here's a 15 millimeter wrench. Yeah, no problem, fits on great. Now, the one thing I would say is that, yes, if you have a set of wrenches like this, you're gonna be okay, but if you have a big, fat, adjustable wrench, it's actually not gonna fit in here. It's not narrow enough. And even this wrench, when I place it on the pedal, it's all over the rubber seal here. It's pushing into the crank arm. It's just not narrow enough to really get in there. Now, what about spokes? Do you need a spoke wrench? All a spoke wrench is, is just a little, U-shaped thing and it fits around the spoke here and makes it kind of easy to turn, but why can't we just take 
an adjustable wrench, close it down really, really small. We can turn a spoke with that, right? And indeed, yeah, we absolutely can. See, the problem is you're only gonna be able to turn it maybe a half turn at a time. With this, much smaller, easier to get in there, you can really make it spin around and get the spoke on a lot quicker. And so given what a set of spoke wrenches cost, I don't know if it's worth trying to use an adjustable wrench. It's just a lot more difficult and you do run the risk of damaging your spoke nipples. Nobody likes a damaged nipple. Now here we have something that's very familiar to anybody with a mountain bike and that is a valve core. Now sometimes valve cores get damaged because a rock hits into it, you don't have a cap on it. Good thing about valve cores is they're really inexpensive and easy to change. And you can see on the valve core right here, there's a little flat spot. And you can get a valve core wrench and take that off very easy. You just put it on there and you just turn it. And it's, it's extraordinarily easy to get in and out. Now, can we turn this without a valve core wrench? Absolutely. And yeah, I suppose we could just use our little adjustable wrench, get it on that flat spot there and crank it down. It's just one little turn you gotta do. You don't need to buy a dedicated valve core wrench. I think it's nice to have, but I'm not gonna tell you you need to run out and buy one. So, I wanted to bring up something, chain tools. Now, almost every bike multi-tool has a chain tool in, even the ones that are like 15, 20 bucks. But having a dedicated chain tool is really nice. It's much easier to use, has a lot of leverage. But these days, do you really need a chain tool? Really, all we would need to do with, let's say, a chain like this is shorten it to size to fit the bike. Okay, so this is me trying to use non-bike tools to get this to size. I'm gonna use this set of little bolt cutters. Should cut through this solid metal pretty easy. Cut one side there, other side there. So the chain's the right size now, but we have all this extra stuff on it. So we gotta try and rip that off. So let's grab the needle nose pliers. Okay, I'm unable to get that off. Let's see if we can use these little nippers to get in there and, and kind of pry it out. No? Okay, so I've got a general purpose hammer and I've got a punch. And let's see what happens if we hit this pin here with the punch. Uh... Yeah, that was kind of counterproductive. All right, let's move up to the vise here. Get it on there and... Mission success. We got the chain apart. Now we'll put it the rest of the way on the bike. First, we're gonna put the chain on and to put the chain on, you don't need any tool whatsoever. Master links can be installed by hand. You put the chain together and then you apply outward pressure to put it on, and then we just go boop. Okay, so if we just go like this, knocks our master link in place. And so now our chain is installed and we didn't use any sort of specialty tools. And it was super easy, right? Yeah. Now, let's say we wanna get this chain apart. I've heard people say that they can get master links apart with their fingers, but you can't. You need Master Link pliers. It's just a set of pliers that has this nice little shape in here. Goes in here, you squeeze it, and it pops your Master Link out. Now, actually, Master Link pliers can put the chain back together as well. So here, you can see there's these little indentations in the outside of the plier, and you can pull outwards, and it'll actually pop the Master Link together as well. But do you need them? Can we just take a normal set of needle nose pliers, get them up in there, and pop the chain apart? You see, if we put them in here, the actual tips of the pliers are too fat to get to the narrow link. Maybe we can grab it here and push here. Now, it's pretty tricky. Now there is a hack to get your master link apart if you don't have master link pliers, and it's with a shoelace. We'll feed our shoelace through there. Get it around to the other side. We can take this shoelace and indeed it snapped the master link off. I like having master link pliers because I work on bikes a lot, but you can do it without it. So here's an interesting one, a shock pump. This is for your front suspension, your rear suspension. Now the thing with the shock pump on a bicycle is that it pumps a tiny, tiny, tiny bit at a time because you wanna to get to a very precise 
pressure. And if you want to let some out, it's got this little bleed valve and it lets little tiny bits of air out every time you push it. So let's see if we can use a normal like uh, electric air pump to pump up our shock to 80 PSI exactly. So let's see what happens when we connect this. Okay, so we're gonna set this pump to 80 PSI. Okay, so shock pumps don't take very much air and so this should happen very quickly. Let's try it, I'm gonna press the button. It went a little bit over, it just happens really quickly. So it says 81 PSI is in it. Let's take off this tube and see how much air escapes. Let's hook up the real shock pump and let's see what pressure it's at. Yeah, it looks like it's at exactly 80 PSI. So yeah, I'm actually pretty amazed at how well this works as a shock pump. Now, if you get down to this next fine point, I should hope you've started to accumulate some bike tools. Now for headset bearings, some bottom bracket cups, this is Park Tools Press and it appears to be a threaded rod with some handles on the end and a couple of washers. And so from the hardware store, I purchased a threaded rod, two washers, one big nut and one small nut over here. Didn't really cost us much while this actually probably costs a fair bit. So let's say something quick and dirty like a headset cup on an older bike, you put the washer in here, put the headset cup down in here. This would go on top of the bike. Then you would just tighten this nut to clamp everything together. But you can see the problem here, the washers we have, they're too small. It would actually go into the headset cup and scratch it. Now you could find a bigger washer, but I have a fairly nice hardware store with a pretty big selection and I couldn't find any washers with bigger flanges than this. Now, the Purpose Made one has Purpose Made washers. Not only are they big enough to fit around the headset cup, but they're also nice and smooth. These galvanized washers are gonna leave all sorts of imprints in this cup and probably damage it. So I think that cup presses are one of those situations where coming up with a replacement is not really worth it, unless you have a machine shop and you can kind of put something nicer together. So next, let's talk about bottom bracket tools. So bottom brackets come in a lot of different sizes and on newer bottom brackets, there are these little indentations that these tools fit into perfectly so you can change out your bearings. So the question is, why can't you just grab this with a channel lock? As you know, these fit any part in the known universe. You can use these to just take anything apart with high precision. Let's see what happens if we carefully, gingerly do it with this channel lock. Oh, what was that? So that actually started eating away at some of the aluminum right here. So it put a big scratch in the bottom bracket cup. Still spins smoothly. I think I'm better off not using the rag so I can at least see what's going on. We'll just concede that there are gonna be some little marks in this when we're done. And, oh. It works. Now, the real problem with this is, this is very thin metal, the shell that's around here. And so when you're squeezing it in two spots right here, you do run the risk of denting it inwards and making it so that the bearings just don't work at all. I mean, this wouldn't even spin. That's why it has these little dimples in it so that it can be grabbed from all the way around and equal pressure is put on the bearing cup. But we were able to squeak by in this situation. Will you? Well, I don't know. Uh, is it worth trying it yourself? That's, that's a decision you have to make. So screwdrivers, hex wrenches, box wrenches, for sure. If you already have tools, you can use those in your bike. You don't have to go out and buy anything new. But if you're getting deep into bike repair, like we do on our flip bike series, you're probably gonna need to pick up some specialty tools. The good thing about tools is if you get a good one, it'll last the rest of your life. For instance, this is probably the best cassette tool you can get, and it's like $9, and you'll never have to like jam needle nose pliers into the little cap at the end. I vote for making your life easier and buying a few bike tools, but hey, you be the judge. We just demonstrated them today. So as you can see, I'm wearing the new flip bike shirt. It's got the new flip bike logo and a whole bunch of bike parts. And so you're signaling to people that you're into bikes. Good conversation starter. If you want it, we have it in several different colors. It's on cognitivemtb.com. 
left a link below. I hope you learned something today, and if not, I hope you were at least entertained. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.